everybody welcome to another video I would say good afternoon uh, from this end but you know it depends what time it is where you are I want to say thank you for joining me in this video in this video we're going to be looking at some um, features in blender okay in blender which you can do for 3d and this is uh, something I've, I've learned we're going to look at ways of um, basically making multiple objects uh, in an area and on making like complex um how can i call this um arrangements of objects basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete the um the other things the light and the camera simply just left click on those objects you want to delete and press the delete key it's been a while since i've made a blender video so i hope you guys are going to enjoy this now before we start this i want to just explain first of all another reason another one specific reason one of many reasons you may want to do this okay first of all um, what, what, what we're doing is if you want to make some kind of complex setup for like a scene with lots of objects okay in a in a, in a like a, a random like a random um, with random positions uh, that's like it's, it's almost like noise let me call it like noise like you know like if you let's say for painting when you're doing art and painting sometimes digital art I do a lot of digital art and painting sometimes you know artists do this where they put like a load of mess on the canvas like all kinds of colors and all kinds of strokes and all kinds of shapes and it's almost like looking up into the clouds and you and like you can see shapes like almost you know sometimes it's like that kind of a thing and what you do is you look into that and you find shapes to draw from okay <clears throat> so this could be useful for this in a 3d kind of way it's like putting down a load of noise it's like putting down a load of mess you could say like all these cluttered objects all over the place with kind of like some kind of arrangement to it that you you're looking at and you, you basically look into that and see what you can find now, because we're going to be dealing with just the cube shape, okay, for the most part, um, the cube, okay, uh, what I want to say is, uh, you know, that it's going to be simple, and there's a reason why I'm doing it with a cube shape too. <clears throat> um, if you've looked at my other videos, I've made videos before uh, using SketchUp and Blender a little bit, and I even have used other things to other softwares and stuff. Um, when it comes to 3D, I don't, I've not messed around too much. I, mean, I did, I liked very much that Neo Axis software. But yeah, and let's go back to what I'm saying. When it comes to like 3D, if you've looked at my previous videos, not only Blender, I made some videos on SketchUp, and I made some videos on um, Fire Alpaca, where it's got these 3D grids as well. And, I, and I'm talking about making grids basically, and it's a similar thing where you have a, like a grid in 3d where you can actually see through it and turn the angles and it's like you've got s like lots of perspective lines so this what we're looking at here what I'm going to show you in this video is really good for setting up scenes for your comics and cartoons is what I'm saying okay, comics or animated cartoons I work hard making a lot of art and animated cartoons and some comics like 2d and um, sometimes it's really hard to get those perspective and lines and stuff you know so uh, you know you can work it it's sometimes hard like if I was going to make like a city right now I could make a, a 3d city here or I could make a room with a table and chairs and, and all that stuff or I could use models what you find what you find online and stuff fair enough and I could draw over that draw like take a, a screenshot and draw over that from various different camera angles so I wouldn't need to work out the perspective every time I just draw over the image or draw over shapes such as this cube and I could turn this cube even into like a house or anything, a table. All I need to do is just work with blocks, cubes, planes, cuboids, just basic sh shapes, so a basic thing. Could use cylinders, up to you. And just basically just um, take those screenshots into software and then just draw on top of them and make, like, draw the detail, you know. But what you need is that basic perspective, you see. So. What I like about this again is like a lot of 3D software is you have this grid okay, on the ground, you can see the grid too, which is also very very useful. If I was going to set up a scene maybe I might want to do that, you know. <coughs> um, by the way I want to mention that Blender does actually have 2D animation 
capability too, but I'm not really comfortable or used to it yet. Okay, so I, I use I use Critter for my animation. It's great. It's a free program. Critter is probably the, for me. I think it's the best animation program out there. I mean, uh, you can do stuff with Photoshop, but I like Critter for my artwork and everything, my animation and everything. Everything you can do a little bit of animation in Fire Alpaca, but it's not the same because they don't have a timeline, and especially like you can't work on multiple layers either when it comes to animation. But they're both good for art. But let's get onto this. Okay. Um, yeah, if you can't see the grid for some reason, uh, just go up to the top here, follow my mouse cursor, uh, you'll see here these things here, this, this little toggle here, just above your camera settings and stuff up here, so you go there, you know, it says show overlays, you know, show overlays, turn it off and on, the other one here, the other one, another way is show gizmos, turn it off and on, so that's quite useful as well, okay. Now I like to work in this kind of a look, now you may be looking at your, you may be looking into your, um, looking at your um, uh, blender viewport here 3d viewport and you may be wondering why my background is white well I wanted it to be that way uh, because but the thing let me just show you if I, we're, we're in we're currently in a shading mode shading viewport okay if I go into the other ones like uh, where is it this one if it, if it loads up this one here uh, this one which is look dev mode right look it's called uh, Hang on one second. No, this is sorry. That was a uh, shading. What's this one? Hold on. Whatever it's called. And you got the yeah. Look dev. So look dev mode. So this one's called solid mode. So it's solid. This this one's solid. This one's look dev, and this one's um, whatever it's called. Uh, hold on. It's rendered view. Okay. The rendered uh, render preview. So the display. It will. You'll see the background's going to be different, obviously, depending on how you set it. But when we go into like the basics, um, solid mode, and what I'm what I love to use is this. We uh, just turn off the X-ray. If you have the X-ray button uh, selected here, um, it, you can see through the object, which can sometimes be useful. And you can have X-ray mode turned on and off for any of these four different modes but we're going to turn x-ray mode off and you can see now currently we're just in wireframe mode wireframe view but x-ray mode is switched off okay and what do we have with a white cube and a white background and it looks very clear right now to me this reminds me of the kind of view I like to have in terms of styles they're called styles in um, SketchUp okay in SketchUp um, now um, what you do if you don't have this view okay what you basically do if you want to get this kind of a view you basically go up to I'm gonna remember now I did it the other day go up to uh, edit then go to preferences then go to themes then go down to 3d view and then scroll all the way down through all of these colors you'll see go all the way down okay until you get to this other thing at the bottom here which says theme space so we're under themes okay we're under themes and then within that we're in, we're in this 3d view okay and then as you go down within this there's another like subcategory within this 3d view category which is under themes and it's called theme space now click on that and go down to where it says um, another one another one which is a uh, gradient colors you may want to take notes of that, okay? And um, basically, yeah, I just clicked on, I just changed it. You can see this is white here, gradient high, off, whatever. If I change that now, you see it's going to change, it's going to update in the screen. See, it's changing as I choose the color. See, so I'm just choosing white, you know. And uh, you can have like a yellow if you want to do that. We'll have a soft yellow, I think, shall we? <laughs> you know, and then that's that, you know. So just remember that, yeah. So, so you do. So basically, it's uh, go. To, uh, let's try that again. Okay. So you basically you go to edit preferences. Write this down if you want. Edit preferences, themes, 3D view, theme space, and then gradient colors, and it's the top bar. Uh, you can click on this thing where it says use gradient if you want to do that. But I don't really bother. I don't really mess with that. If you want to use the gradient, you can. You can have like a different color can't you obviously that's what it basically means you can have like another gradient so this is again this is very similar to um, 
SketchUp in a way, you know. I click off now, you can see it's got a nice gradient. It's kind of nice to have. So I'll just have this for now. And uh, I think that's nice. I haven't found a way of like turning off the visibility for the actual um, lines if you wanted to have that. Obviously, we can turn off the grid view if you wanted to have that. But in terms of shadows and stuff, you're going to have to have it in a different mode, one of these different modes, if you want to see the shadows and everything, you know, and all that stuff. And you can change the background color by going to the world settings. When you're in mid mode, let's say, for example, you can just change the background by going to the world settings and clicking on this here for the surface of the world. You can change the color to another color if you want. So we can get like a similar color and change the strength of it too by making it bright or whatever. But things run much slower in this mode, okay? Compared, I'm saying, okay? So let's just go back to the, the normal one, okay? We go there. I like to have the lines personally because we're using it for that reason. We're going to take screenshots and we're going to draw over this stuff. Maybe not in this video, but that's the whole point, okay? Um, I will do something. I'll just click on my box, my cube quickly, and let's find that cube. It's been quite a while since I've actually used uh, this, I must, say, I must say. Okay, let's go back to where we are. So, where is it? Um been such a while since I've used it so uh, I've forgotten how to actually do it so this is the object right the emission you got all the things there material I'm just trying to work it out settings maybe blend opaque viewport display roughness no 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 custom properties now I'm looking there is there's a way anyway of like turn as I say Turning off those lines. If anybody knows, you can let me know if you like. I'd be grateful for that. But but uh, turning off the visibility of the lines in uh, wireframe mode. Okay, turning off the wireframes basically. Um, but yeah, you can't really have the shadows though in it, as far as I know, in wireframe mode. But let's just get onto this. Okay, so there's a few settings for you there. Okay. Um, um, so one thing we can do with this object, okay, remember we've got these different modes. I keep saying mode, I mean at the top here you've got the viewport uh, dis display modes, but then you've also got the object, you've got these modes up here on the left. We're in object mode right now. In object mode you can just do the basic things, as I say, like moving the object around, uh, rotating the object. Uh, if you don't like um, something you've done, just hold control and press Z, Z to undo that, okay, obviously. Um, click elsewhere there. Uh, you can scale uh, by clicking the object. If you click on the outside circle for any of these maneuvers, m most of them, and drag, left click this is, you can size the whole thing overall, like universally, whatever you call that, you know, globally, the, uh, the whole object. But if you click on these little toggles, it will, it will change them only in that direction, okay? Another way to um, Let's just go back to what we just had, okay? Let's, let me show you another way to move. Moving the object basically means uh, translating it. They call it translating, okay? Rotation, okay? And then you've got um, sizing or scaling, okay? There's a fourth one down here, which is um, combined. It combines all of these. So you can do all of these, any of these, within, this, within these different toggles, okay? Um, you left click, by the way, and just drag the directions to do any of those movements, okay, these maneuvers. Um, this little cursor thing, you don't really need to bother with that at all, okay, or the other ones at the bottom for now, okay, that's just basically a cursor setting. It just basically, what it does is if you click it, if you, it's not showing now, uh, I need to click, yeah, have my viewport on display, okay, my um, show overlays, okay, so when I, when I click anywhere, you can see this little target thing, it's following, okay, it's the cursor. If I was to go to add up here, add, I can go down here and choose any of these like extra things. Go to mesh, and let's add another cube, another cube. I press it, bang, okay. And it's added the cube right there. It's added the cube right where that was, you know. So that's basically what it does. It do, it basically adds things or puts, you, it, whenever you do certain things, it will it, it decides where it's going to be done, you know, basically. So I'm just going to hit hold control and press Z to delete that. And I'm going to go back to my select box at the top here. If you left click on some of these, you can see some of these have these different um, like extra features. And you'll find that in the edit mode too. But like it's got this little uh, arrow in the bottom right hand corner here. When I click on that, I can go down and choose different methods of selecting objects. Like just a normal select, like selecting the object. Click away to click 
off like to unclick unselect it to deselect it if I left click and go down to the select box it's very very useful because for example if I had another object such as a sphere for example I can left click outside of those objects and drag and hold and move the mouse and it will select both of them and now when I use my objects here well, when I click on the move for example the translate tool it will translate both of those now and you can do you can do operations like this things like this when, when you're in edit mode too so with certain things uh, I want to just say uh, we're going to look at a few maneuvers in a moment too so I'm just going over a few bl blender basics here as well so this is a good way to get you started okay um, in setting up some scenes basics right and this is basically enough really for like setting up some scenes for your animation and because I can have this this could be a building this could be a table or anything you know I could take a screenshot of this I could basically turn off my um, overlays if I wanted to like that and then just take a screenshot and then draw over that in another software bring the image into your art software and draw over it or just use it for reference you know or you could like make proper de detailed models and sell them online <laughs> on Sketchfab or wherever you want to sell them you know I've got a lot of models on Gumroad as I've been I've made um, a big pack of urban models just basic stuff low poly and that's on my Gumroad uh, on Gumroad and I've been trying to uh, share that through my Patreon as well and it's got hundreds of models and stuff I've made I've also got a pack of tunnels which I've made and a car vehicle which I've made and which is that's a free that one and there's also a fridge, a very detailed fridge I made. So I've got some models I'm trying to make on the side too. I mainly focus on 2D art and animation, art and animation, but I do use 3D sometimes. I use 3D to help me with certain perspective for certain things. I'm fascinated in making games too, 2D and 3D on the side a little bit. And some 3D effects in my short movies I make. But let's get back to this now. Um, so... Uh, I don't want this sphere, so I'm going to click on it and I'm going to press the delete key. Bang. If you right click on an object, you can do certain things. So if I right click, we can copy an object and then paste an object. Didn't work. Do you know why it didn't work? Because we didn't select it. You've got to select it. And I knew that. So left click and select an object. You can see straight away there's an orange outline around it unless you have um, chosen different colors under the preferences, which we looked at earlier under render, uh, under edit and preferences. Okay, down here. You can change certain things like the way it's highlighted and that. So from here now we're going to right click press uh, copy object and then paste object you can do a lot of different things I can duplicate objects too okay so that, that's a copy is similar thing really you can go to a copy I can go down to all the different things set origin all kinds of stuff paste do du make duplicates uh, mirror the object along the axis axes sorry um, snap parent objects so they're joined together I've got videos on my channel about parenting and rigging and things like that as well animation and boning objects um, a lot of things there um, you know but uh, you know we've got animation and stuff um, shade smooth so if you had an object which was like really jagged like some I don't know some rocky thing you could like make it look a bit more smooth and round by clicking shade smooth and it does that to everything in the scene these are obviously cubes so I'm not going to bother with that now uh, mirror yeah, you can like you know change um, the the angle of things so mirroring things basically so I'm not going to do that in this video uh, okay I will do it in this video I'll show you two operations I'm going to drag this this box into this one and move it into a certain position and I'm gonna let's just, just let's just say we're gonna make a little building or something okay I'm gonna change the shape of that okay and I'm just gonna rotate this on that angle move it until it's joined or well, I want to join this to make this one object because it's no good me clicking one every time and moving it away I need to join them to become one object solid make them one object you can see them in the list up here if you look on the right hand side of the screen up here on the top right this is a collection and in this collection we have two cubes I've not named them when I click on one you'll see that it updates in the viewport too it highlights the object when you click on these here it will do that below on the bottom right hand side we basically got all the features of this object so I can change the base color for example by going down just clicking on that and then choosing like a red or something the reason it's not showing now is because we're not setting the right settings you can set certain settings and stuff in wireframe mode as far as I know but um, if I was in another view 
another viewport like this here like in especially uh, where is it yeah like it's rendered in rendered view or in uh, look dev mode any of those you can uh, have that change the colors you know but we're just in solid or you know wireframe here so it's not really important but as I say yeah so you can rename them by double clicking on your um, object here in, in the list okay in the scene collection and I can call it whatever I want so I'll just call it some silly name okay whatever that's this one now what I want to do is I want to get my box select if you can if you want to select multiple objects there's ways of doing it one way is you can just use the select tools one way is as I say um, remember left click and hold to get those other options up and then let go as you hover over and let go to make it another one but I'm just clicking the ones to choose this box select I can select both of them to select both I can also click away to deselect or I can click one object and then hold down shift uh, hold down uh, no yes yes hold down shift and then click on another object and that selects them both so if you, if you had a very complex complex scene with lots of different models like a forest with lots of trees or grass or whatever and you wanted to just select two of them and it was kind of hard to use the box select or other ones you could manually just do it that way by clicking on one holding shift and then pressing that and then again hold it con continuously holding shift while you left click on the other objects once they're all done you can perform any of your movements what we're going to do now is we're not we're not going to move them okay we're not going to do anything now. we're not going to rotate them <laughs> Hold Control and press Z or Z to undo that. Undo, okay, undo that. Um, I think I don't press, we're, not, we're not going to scale them here. We're not, gonna, we're not trying to scale anything here per se. Okay, you could make a house shape, see, or certain things. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to right click now because they're both selected. We're going to right click on any of those two and we're going to uh, basically go to join. Join. Okay, now they're one. So if I click away, yeah, I'm using the box select, but it's like select box, but it's still just the same. You can just click on an object. Now this is literally one object, and if you look up here in the in the um, collection, it's literally just one object. Now that one disappeared. It's, that underneath is just what's in it. The, the, the things. Don't worry about that. Okay, it's, not, it's just telling you it's pieces, but this is one object. Okay. Now, um, what I can do. <coughs> is undo that for a second undo that for a quick second okay pressing undo a few times here check that there's separate objects now hold on you'll see when they become separate objects okay now they're separate objects as I say again what I can also do is hold shift left click okay on that second object so I click the first one first select the first one then I hold shift and then click on the other objects what I do is I right I, I now now I don't hold uh, shift I hold control and press J to join them okay and that's made them uh, one object now when you want to um, move an object we know we've got these features on the left here but another thing you can do is you can remember some uh, keyboard shortcuts for this stuff as well so what you can do is when you've got your object selected and we're in object mode don't forget what you can do is okay you can uh, press G on your keyboard to grab the object once you grab the object you'll find if you move your mouse it's going to move this uh, excuse me let's do that again <laughs> zoom out a little bit if you want to zoom in and zoom out you just use the mouse wheel sorry I should have said that earlier on in the video zoom in out by moving the mouse wheel the middle button up and down um, okay and you can also press uh, the middle mouse button in the wheel and move to move move the mouse then while you're holding it to turn the angle as well I should have said that in the beginning I'm very sorry so to look around the viewport which I should have told you earlier as I say press the middle mouse button in the wheel and move your mouse to look around or just let go and just zoom in out by rolling the, the wheel we've talked about left clicking on objects and right clicking, right clicking on objects just shows you other features and stuff you can do with them but left clicking just selects them sometimes you'll need to you know hold and stuff so yeah as I say um you can yeah you can actually click on the actual hold and move it around freely see uh, or you can just as I say um, click on it and then click on the toggles to move it only in that direction or um, you know 
depending on what you've got set, you know, translate, which is move, uh, rotate, or scale, or the combined one. Uh, another thing, um, if you want to pan the camera, which means just keep the camera focused in one angle, but one, one direction, but like move it um, side to side or up and down, you can literally just hold uh, shift, okay, then press the press the middle mouse button in like a button and just hold them both and just move the mouse like that okay that's another way you can do that let's get those angles okay you want to have um now um so you want to get all these angles here okay um with different directions practice these and you'll, it'll become second nature like a lot of this stuff will uh, a lot of different things here like at the top of this view select object obviously you can we just know the basics just for now as I say you can pair in objects together with other ones you can add objects go to add and then add another mesh add one of these objects if you want to do that a lot of objects have their own features too so when you add an object sometimes it will come up with like another list of features that it can do like um, options and things for it. it's pretty interesting and fun on the right hand side too you're going to see all these um, settings for it as well so settings in different ways there's also another thing you can do you can press n i believe it is and that brings up this thing on the side here and press it again to close it down so we're saying n n for no and uh, you can also just drag it open here okay too and it shows you different things and if you go to their view and whatever they've got quite a lot of things whenever you add some like certain um uh, other, other, um, what do you call it? Add-ons and stuff. You can, they will come up here too. You can also see here um, we have this, this, these camera angles here. These at the top right here. Can you see? So when I press these, we can see the different camera angles for that. We can zoom in and out, and we can really match them up. Now those you get the X, Y and Z or Z axis so I can drag these objects and stuff to get them really lined up nicely I can see that it's not directly on the ground there can you see so I'm using the same camera and camera controls and stuff as I did earlier on or the within the viewport I'm saying viewport I'm going to drag that in and there we are um, that's like the best way you can do it um, that's one of the best ways you can do it but um, so basically the Z one, if you're looking at these lines, the green, red and the blue, the blue one is the Z axis. You can see it by these tools as well. So let's say for example, okay, I want to move this object now. I'm going to press G once it's selected and highlight. Make sure it's still highlighted. It's not highlighted here. If I left click and highlight it, it will be highlighted. If I press G, now it's grabbed. I'm not going to move my mouse because it will move freely and I have to place it back. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to press one of these. You're going to have to remember these. Z is the blue one. It goes up and down. Okay, the the, the green is the y the y axis and red is the x axis. So what I do is I press one of those. Let's just press Z or Z, and then it locks to that. You see now if I move my mouse any direction, it will just you see when I move it, it will stay on that line. Now let's try again. I'm going to press G, make sure it's grabbed. Then I'm going to press Y and move. No, I have to do it again. We click off, okay? Then press G, Y, and then move here. And then click away, then click on it again. I'm going to press G, X, and move it along on that angle, see? And, um, you know, you'll see different things with the um, with the rotation too. Now, any of these, the, the moving, the rotation, or the scaling, the sizing, um, it's pretty easy to remember. Look, for moving, okay, you've got to remember to, you need to grab it first. Grab, so G, you press G on the keyboard, right? For R, you simply press for rotate, so rotate, see, so you press R. So pressing R and now moving my mouse freely, it's just going to move freely. But you don't move the mouse, what you do is you, you, you click on the object and then you press R or whatever it is, G for grab if you want to move it. And then you basically for rotation, you, you put like a number or you put the axis again so that we put like I'll put I'll put Y which is the green axis I get the green axis Y so now it's locked to that axis you've got to press the direction first you see and now what I can do is I can type in a number for some of these uh, sizes for example but for now all I need to do really is I can just move my mouse see and it will turn it on there if I want to get a perfect angle like a perfect like one I can click on it for example and press R 
and then maybe put something like type in numbers like uh, no press Y first I'll press X this time okay X X axis then I press like 45 maybe but you'll see what I mean all that here you press numbers and it will take you to that whatever angle you want is what I'm trying to say basically okay so click there sorry I'm gonna press um, Z oh no sorry no R I forgot to press R so R right for rotate Z axis the up and down one so it's gonna spin around on it basically like that's gone straight through it see and then I'm gonna they, they go through the axis of the actual center of that origin of that um, model which you can also move to the same way to that but yeah from here it's in there okay yeah and I'm gonna just press 90 90 is the one yeah 90 boom and it just does that it just moved it like totally to the side like perfectly see 90 we've got the grid on the ground too which is good to see what we're doing the sizing as I say you can click on the object and then you can press S to scale or size and then if I drag the mouse obviously it's going to drag it, it's going to move it, uh, it um, the whole object's going to be sized the same in the same direction to say but I can as I say see re even regardless of me having one of these selected these on the left here on these toggles by pressing those shortcuts it still does what it wanted to do you know so if I select the object and obviously press S now for size and if I press 100 and click and then click away and then zoom out you can see how big this object is now I'm happy we've got a problem here I'm happy because we can see happy little accident there's a problem we can't see our full object right and this is something that really got on my nerves for a long time because I didn't know why I wasn't able to see uh, everything in my scene sometimes and when I have it in different views as well it's the same thing you see you can, can't see the object when I zoom out further and I don't know why I didn't know why so what you do is you go to view okay in any of these modes it doesn't matter what mode you're in but you go to view in terms of view the viewport mode but you go to view okay make sure you open this thing up okay if it's not opening up you can just drag it out okay the thing or you can press N for no on the keyboard and you go down here where it says under focal length clip start and then end where it says end before the M just press some zeros, more zeros, I press a load of zeros, bang and then click somewhere on the viewport and you can see it's giving you more view but you might get these artifacts because I've got like too many zeros like right this, a bit crazy, we didn't need to have that many so I've toned it down a bit, I've leveled it down and now we're seeing that we're seeing uh, more of the object right now this object here, I'm going to try something, I'm going to click on this, you can see it's not directly on the ground and I remember I learned how to do this before, I'm going to try this, I'm going to press I'm going to try, I'm going to, what do you do, um, move right, it's for G right, it's a shortcut ok, you can press G right, no, I think it's G is to grab the object, so if what are you going to grab, ok I'm going to press, how do you do that, to move it, shortcut, shift, spacebar G. I don't this is what I don't usually do. Shift space bar G. Oh it just brings that up. It brings up another thing basically. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the move tool. I'm just gonna click on it and I'm gonna press Z. Didn't work, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna press G, sorry, I just changed the mode by accident there. Press G. Okay. Click on it, then press G. Yes, yeah, so you've got to select it and then you've got to press G to grab it because you're going to get ready to move it. Then you're going to press Z, Z, and I'm going to press 0. Right, and then enter. Nothing happened. Okay, I'll, I'll press 1 then. I'm not too sure about this myself. So G, Z, 1. Where 1? No, no, it didn't work either. So I'm trying to work out how you put it exactly on the ground. I did learn before, but I'll. Uh, We'll talk about that in another video. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is we're going to uh, move that across. I'm going to press N. Okay, now let's talk about making some duplicates. Okay, let's talk about these duplicates now. Okay, so we've got an object here. It could be just a cube. We'll, we'll make it a cube. Let's make it. Let's add a cube. Okay, add a cube. And I'm going to delete this uh, first one here. We don't need to see that. Delete that. Press. Oh. 
Okay, let's try again. I've deleted everything, okay? Oh, if you want to select all the objects in your scene, you press A on the keyboard for all and it selects everything. And then you just press the delete button, okay, if you want to delete them or move them all using whatever you want to do here. So I'm going to go to add, mesh, and then cube. We can't really see it because we're zoomed out too far. And it's a very small cube it should be. Pretty sure that's the reason. Uh, if it's not the reason, if there's some other reason why things aren't showing up, like you can see here, because we did crazy stuff with the camera, didn't we? Then you might have to like turn it off and go back straight into your software again. But I'm pressing S on the keyboard to scale up. Still not working, so I'm just going to go start a new one. Start a new. I've gone file, new. I've started a new project. Okay. Let me just select the camera and the light by holding Shift and then left clicking both of them. Now I'm going to press Delete. Uh, I'm going to move this up. Move tool. Go back into my view. I'll turn off the X-ray here. Up here on the left, you have an X-ray button. Don't forget to turn it off. Um, okay. Um, now, so let's do it. Okay. What I can do, you can in Blender we have called modifiers. So what I can do is I can go to this here. This down the side, if you look on the right hand side, your one will not be coloured red, I've just changed the colour because I wanted it to be red looking. But if you go here to the um, spanner, the wrench icon, can you see that here? And it says uh, context modifiers. Modif if I click on that now, I've got my cube selected, okay, I should have. I'm going to go to add modifier and I'm going to click on array. Bang. and you can see what's happened it's added another one directly beside it it's not another cube it's basically it's just it will be the same object but it's like as far as I know but it's like joined to it it's an array now arrays are only visible in object mode so apparently so I mean uh, modifiers modifiers are only visible in object mode there's a lot of modifiers you can add to your objects to modify them so this is one of them so when you're in object mode um, they'll be visible. If I'm in, if I go to edit mode, uh, it may not may not be visible like immediately. That the the changes, I should say, the the effect that the uh, some modifiers have may not be visible. This one seems to be visible, but we're going to go back into object mode. Okay. Now we've not applied the modifier yet. Meaning, if I were to do something else, this might just disappear. The um, what we've done, that we've duplicated it. If I go over here on the right, you can see the count. The count. It says two. If I press more, it's going to add more. Okay. Uh, what we can also do is um, do different things. I can merge them or do different things. We've got the offset, the relevant, and I can also like up, uh, up this offset so it makes spaces. So you can make a row of buildings or houses or whatever. The other direction you can turn, you can change the other directions of them too. See up and down or whatever you want to do. That's another way of doing it. Okay close the distance up, whatever you want to do. Okay, fixed count, uh, length, different things you can do, curves, all kinds of stuff, right? Um, yeah, so that's one thing you can do, and you can press apply, obviously, you know. Okay, so you might want to do that, you may want to do that. Make, make some errors or something, use your imagination, you know. Well, I'm going to press, I'm going to undo all that by holding, um, Z, holding uh, so control and pressing Z, Z on the keyboard. Get back to what we had. <laughs> Looks like animation, right? Okay, getting back to where we had that. Okay, so that's back to the start. Okay. Now uh, I'm gonna um, make sure you get the right tools set. Um, another way of um, of a uh, Doing this obviously is simply duplicating the object. Okay, so I might want to do. I might want to just hold Shift and then press D and then move the mouse, and that duplicates or duplicates the object. So now, so we'll do that again. I'm going to hold Shift and press D for duplicate, and then I'm going to choose the axis. So I'm going to choose the Y, which is the green axis. X is the red axis. Y is the green axis. Z is the blue axis. Okay, pretty easy to remember. Remember two, you'll remember the other one. If I press, um, just remember blue is Z, green's Y, and the X must be the red one, right? <laughs> so uh, if you hold on one second, guys, if you wait for me for one, one second, okay? okay.
Okay, I'm very, very sorry. This is uh, clip two. I had to just stop the video there, but I'm going to edit them together the best I can, okay? Thanks for joining me. So, yeah, where did we leave off? So, you know, duplicating an object here. So I can select an object here. Let's just uh, delete one of these cubes because there are two there. They're just overlapped. So I'm going to click on this cube. Uh, if you want to select your objects, don't forget you can also select them by clicking on the uh, in the list here at the top right. You can see on the list, so I can click it and it will select it. You can also see these eyeball um, things here. If you click that, it will show the visibility on or off. Okay, you can click that on and off to show the visibility. Um, we also have the um, collection, obviously, which is which they're part of. It's almost like a group, almost. But they have a thing in this called groups, so it's a little bit different. We'll, we'll get into that now. Um, but what I'm going to look at here, okay, is um, duplicating. So let's continue. I'm going to click on my object here. I'm going to hold down shift and press D then I'm going to just choose one of these okay I'm going to choose the Y axis which is the green one okay green one and rather than just moving my mouse and freely moving it um, it, it will stay on this line but rather than do that I'm going to press a number I'm going to press one you can see what's happened it's not too good right so let's undo that I'll click just click or on them or click elsewhere now I'm going to undo that quickly click away then click back on it hold shift press D oh, this time we'll do the X it could be anyone it doesn't matter which one I'm gonna press X and I'm gonna press 2 bam so it works its way like that okay and then you know you can like select both of them by just hold clicking on the first one and then holding then and then holding shift after you've clicked on the first one hold shift and then left click on the other one I can basically duplicate those by holding control so holding shift sorry and then pressing D for duplicate this time we'll do it in the Y direction so Y 2 I think maybe before hang on can get can, kind of confusing see I should have pressed 4 really something was wrong there I don't know what the hell just happened there but you know the point is you can move them in the in whatever direction so hold shift press D for duplicate I'm gonna press Y Y it should be Y yeah I pressed the wrong key, I think I pressed T. <laughs> you'll see if it worked because you'll see the line appear along that line of axis there. Let's try two, maybe four. Oh no, okay, two's right. Bang. So what we've got here is a bunch of objects, a collection of objects here. So if I click on them, they are literally separate objects. Okay, they are separate objects. They're not one object yet because to join them as one, we need to select. You can use the box select tool if you want up here with a square the way it's selected here this one and you can hold click outside of that selection and left click and drag to select them all or you can just hold shift as I said while you're clicking on those different objects you can hold shift right from the start hold shift then left click on each of the objects and that will work too but once you've got them all selected I like to use the box select a lot of the time once you've got the the, the seems not too cluttered right then you can right click on those within that selection over hover your mouse over them and do that then click on join which I've already shown you already and you can see it tells you the shortcut for this here and it does this for a lot of the things you hover over it tells you the shortcuts for them or some information and stuff and that basically is hold control and press J and now that's one object okay but we don't want to do that so I'm gonna hold down control now and press Z or Z clicking away you can see now when I click on these different ones they are different objects okay now I'm clicking on each object, which clicking on this cube, I'm clicking on that cube, or whatever they are, the cubes are okay. If we was in edit mode, you wouldn't be able to necessarily choose a whole object like that, like a cube, uh, necessarily like that. It, when you're in edit mode, if I just quickly go to edit mode, if I go to objects at the top here, object mode, and go down to edit mode, you'll see that beside these modes, once we're in edit mode, okay, we have the everything's changed for a start. We have a load of different tools down the side, which are very very useful. We have different options all around the interface, the uh, GUI. Um, but what you go have here is uh, points, which are basically like the corners, you know, the points. You can see if I zoom in, you can see the kind of zoom these little orange dots there, in the corners. And you also have another thing called, um, if I click away for a moment, you can see nothing selected now. Click, click elsewhere. If I click on edges, and then if I select, I can select edges, you see. I can left click and select edges. 
So I'm holding, uh, you know, I can only select the edges of this particular cube. You know why? Because I'm holding shift the same way and and then just left clicking. I can't click on the other cubes edges because I've selected this cube to work with. Now another, if you select four, like I just did, one, two, three, four. Hold on, you will see that um, it's, it turns that particular face orange because we have a thing up here. You look at the edit mode, okay? You have points, edges, and then we have faces. But when you select like a loop, like of edges, obviously it's gonna in, it's gonna include that face. It it selects the the face, you know. So if you want to work with one face, don't be two faced. No, just kidding. Basically, you know, you can just click on a face, any of the faces. See, I can literally hold shift and click on another face too. I'll cover this again in another video. I think covering the edit mode. Okay. But you can click face, but I, I can't. I can't click on the other faces of the other um, objects, and the reason is, is because before you go into edit mode to do any of your editing with these faces or edges or points, uh, you, and, and use all of these amazing tools here for cutting and shaping and doing all that cool stuff. Before you do that, okay, you need to select an object in object mode. So if I go back to object mode, you can see that if I click away. I just chose that object. Remember, you can only choose the whole object in object mode. We don't have the points, edges, and faces thing. It just selects the object. So if I want to select this object, and or maybe this object, or maybe I want to select two objects, I select, I hold shift, so excuse me, I hold, uh, where's the, oh, I just lost my camera angle. So if I hold, um, you know, shift, okay, and then click on two objects, for example, if I want to edit these simultaneously, I just go into edit mode, and now you can see that they're completely selected. Now I don't I don't want to work with all of those faces. We're in face mode, you can see up here. But I can just click away and I can just start choosing whatever I want. I can choose this face of this one, I can choose two faces of this one, maybe click on the points as well. But then they're still selected, if the faces you see, but now I can start working with points. I might I might choose this point over here. But it seems to connect certain edges. Like obviously points are connected to edges and edges are connected to faces and they're all connected as one object, right? I can also choose the edges, of course, and choose one of those edges. Now if I start, you know, I, you can see that we still have the basic four things at the top here for in edit mode. So that I can move them, I can move these around. And it just like moves those in some strange angles and stuff. Excuse me. Ah. And it starts to stretch them though and do strange things. If I start sizing everything, you can see it all just changes like weird, weird uh, shapes. Excuse me. While I get my camera sorted out there. And everything starts to just like get strange. I can change the shapes and stuff. You know, click it elsewhere if you need to. I'm sorry, I'm getting my camera all over the place here. So, <laughs> sorry, guys. Let me just see if this is still recording. It hasn't cut out, is it? I hope not. No, good. I hate when you're making a video sometimes and it gets cut off, you know, or something. But yeah, you can do all this different stuff. Now, I could, I could literally just choose this one face here. Let me just go choose the face. Uh, this one, sorry. Uh, and then I could rotate it by like, using the rotation tool. Another way of editing your shapes as well. So you just move that, see a certain way. You can see that maybe better in another mode, view mode. See like this here. I'm literally doing it like that. I might want to just choose a couple, a few different faces, even like holding shift and then selecting multiple ones. I have to. I can only work with the objects I've selected. Don't forget. So if I start moving things now, you see it's going to do strange things. Stretch here. I can rotate and stuff you can make all kinds of cool stuff you know and then what i can do is i can click away and i can still as i say i can still like select the whole well, you can't we don't have the selection box or anything there anymore the select tool seems to not be here because we've already selected what, what we want to work with so you need to go back into object mode if you want to deselect or like select another object or something so i could select this now let's just make this uh one object let's make this whole thing one object right 
or we'll make this a bit more interesting I'll just change the shape of that one a little bit okay okay so this is one object okay I'm gonna no not yet I'm gonna select box select everything here hold control control and press J now they're joined as one object so if I go into edit mode this will literally be just one object I can work with the whole thing anyway let's imagine now I want to make a um, a duplicate of this and I want to mirror it okay so let's do that I'm gonna hold shift press press uh, D for duplicate I'm gonna go on the x-axis bam and I'm gonna go I'm gonna press 2 I think okay it was kind of wrong but it's okay let's, we can kind of move it a little bit more I can click away and then just move it if I want to get into some kind of position let's say I want to have it here okay at, at the end so I'm going to put it here. And let's say I want to now mirror this. So I right click on the object and I can go to mirror and I can choose uh, which way. Okay, so I want to go to the X axis. Bang. Global. Okay, X is X axis is X global. Now I want to join these up together. So I might want to do that. There's, there's ways of doing this like more cleanly, but I'm just doing it this way. Hold shift now. Um, select both of them as I say left click then hold control and press J to join them now this is one object so you could make some kind of funky spaceship chair thing or whatever you want to make you can reshape everything and make all kinds of cool shapes and stuff don't forget and work with these in different ways uh, very sorry about that noise out there people shouting again sorry as usual but if I just quickly um <laughs> that's what we have to put up with here but if I, um, as I say now, from here, if I want to get um, some variation of that, let me just show you what I can do. If I start a new project here, start a new and go to general, okay, discard changes. I'm going to select the camera and the light because we're not using them for this. We're not doing any animation. We don't need any effects like that. I'm going to go to my views again. Turn turn off the X-ray view. When you click on wireframe mu mu um, view, the f from the four on the right there is the one on the left. The one beside that on its left, the wireframe will automatically turn on. Um, so if you don't want that on, you can just click that off, and you can still use because you can use the X-ray mode for any of the any of the views. I'm gonna have another view here and turn that into X-ray, or sorry, the um, oh you can yeah you can yeah you can have that X-ray view on, and I can see through this. If, if I had another object, you can see through it. You know. Um, anyway, we're gonna go in this view now, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, Remember these toggles at the top here, okay? You've got show gizmo and you've got sh uh, show overlays. So they're very important. If you don't see the grid, you need to click that. If you can't see the um, gizmo, stop the arrow, the thing, like when you want to see, see the arrows to move it, you can't see them, right? So I may need to click on that show gizmos. Uh, when I go to move, I mean, you see, because otherwise it won't show. But now what I'm going to say is I'm going, to, I'm going to just make some duplicates just really quickly. This is different from the array modifier we added, which is one of many modifiers in this. There's so many different things you can do in effects in this, as I say. But I'm going to hold shift and press D to duplicate. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just press X. I'm just going to basically make a load of copies, basically. So let's just do that very quickly here. Just making a load of copies of these cubes. Okay. I'm going to put them. They're not going to be too neat. I'm just putting them all over the place. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to alter them like um, individually either. I'm just going to make them as a bunch of cubes, okay? So I'm just moving them in the ways we've talked about already. So like highlighting them all, selecting them all, holding shift, pressing D, then choosing the, to lock onto which um, axis. Like I'm going to press X for now, okay, or Y maybe. Then just move the mouse freely, or you can press a number to get it more even. But I'm just doing this for now. Okay. Uh, bang, one more time, I think. Okay. I think what I will do is as well, I'll, I'll make some more and I'll put them on top. I'll make another layer. So, go up. I'm going to go. Bang. Press Z. Z, okay. Move these up. Kind of crazy, right? You can do this with any shapes, not just cubes either. Um, I could. Like obviously size all of these a different way or things like that change things. I can obviously move them in different ways, obviously, you know, and position them differently if I want to. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do something now. All of these objects, I could make this into one. I could literally select them all, 
select them all or just press A to select all of them because there's no other objects in this scene so it's okay to do so or within this group or collection I'm just going to left click and select all of these it would be kind of work now for me to manually like if I wanted to just select two of these cubes it's kind of hard like two cubes because when I, if I use the select box it's going to accidentally click select other one right? it's hard not to so what would I do if I wanted to just select two of them I would just hold down shift and then just click on them the ones I want okay, here and that has those two uh, selected which I can then work with you know, however I want to move them okay or whatever but what I'm going to do, hold the uh, hold control and press Z to undo as I say click away to or somewhere to click off of those now uh, you can also go to I'm sure there's a way if you go to select you can also go up here to select and invert selections uh, select all or select none so you can hold alt and press A to select none it says here uh, things you can do I'm looking for deselect where's the deselect select there must be a select random oh my god select all by type um, mirror selection. I'm looking for there must be invert. I don't know what invert actually does, probably just does the opposite in some way. I'm just looking for deselect. I don't know where that is. There must be a way to choose deselect, but anyway, just click elsewhere. So I'm not gonna select all of these, all of them, with the box select, and then hold shift and press no, so hold control and press. Uh, J to join them because I want to do something I want to keep these as individual objects and I want to change all of them uh, transform them at the same time uh, translate them transform what I need to do is I need to please excuse me if I'm using the wrong word there translate I mean you're not transform but I'm gonna select all of them make sure they're all contained within that box area otherwise you may miss some out like that okay uh, you know Make sure you uh, select them all, okay? If you want to get a good camera angle, remember you have the camera angles up here, top right. You can press on those camera controls to get perfect alignment. Then you can move your mouse, move it back around again if you want to. Um, I wouldn't bother touching any of these at the top here. We've got the settings I've got set up here. These settings up here, like global is set to global here. Okay, things like that. This one is um, pivot point, uh, snap snapping the um, things like that I wouldn't bother using it just leave it as it is if you have any questions let me know but I, I, I don't touch a lot of things in here anyway I'm not an expert on this really I'm just knowing just know the basics I love going into edit mode um, like I like going into modeling and sculpting and different things UV editing and texture painting shading animations rendering compositing scripting there's so many different modes but I like to go into just keep it in layout mode and uh, use like edit. We're going to use all of the different ones at different times, obviously. But I love to use edit mode more than sculpt mode, I must say. But we're keeping it in object mode. That's what you need to do when you're dealing with just objects as such before you edit the shapes. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these. That was a that was a mouthful, man. We're going to select all of them. Highlight and select all of them there. Okay, make sure they're all selected. Highlight it. Then we're going to go to um, object, I believe. Object, yes. And uh, you can do a lot of different things here, right? Obviously, um, a lot of the things we already talked about. You know, as I say, well, you know, uh, yeah. But well, what you can do is, okay, um, what you can do is you can um, go to transform the top one. It's okay, so object and transform, and then go down to where it says randomize transform randomize transform that's what I learned earlier on today on online so go to object object transform randomize transform click it bang and what you'll see is don't click anywhere else yet look down here at the bottom left you'll see this randomize transform thing sharp click on that and open it up now you can do certain things um, if you play with these arrows You'll see different things happen like here or you can just drag the drag it like click in the middle on the number you see where the number is and then left click and hold the mouse and just move these different ones location we're currently moving the location of them by left clicking and dragging I can move my camera to cool or what huh? you can do it with all kinds of different um, objects as I say uh, you can randomize the rotation as well. You can ro rotate things if you want to rotate stuff. 
like a strange dream. It's like that movie Inception. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's really cool, right? Big time. Uh, scale. You can randomise the scale. And all I want to say that like, you can randomise the scale. I'm doing things like that, you know, to get some crazy stuff going on. But I may want to like just do certain things. We just hold shift and undo that. Okay, hold shift, hold uh, control and press Z. Sorry. Let's go back to object at the top here. Object, then transform, then down to randomize, transform. Uh, let's just turn off this randomize rotation. Yeah, that's what I should have done. Just click it off. So you got these little tick boxes. Okay. This other one, random seeds, pretty interesting. Uh, you can play with that. See as well. It just changes how that was arranged. Uh, transform Delta, I don't know what that does, um, but I'll leave it off anyway. And uh, you can do that, you see, and you can just like play around with the location and the scale, maybe you might want to do that, and um, you can do a lot of stuff. If I click away now, we've got this, and these are all individual objects, don't forget, which is still cool, so we've not joined them yet. If you wanted to, I could join these now and then duplicate the whole thing, then move the whole thing around and whatever. But I'm just saying, if I wanted to like use this, I could like maybe use these things. This may give you some visualization. Like I'm maybe here, and using my vision, once I zoom into this, I can see like shapes. It looks like uh, maybe buildings, or this could be a platform here, like a idea. You know, you could make like a staircase leading from somewhere to somewhere else. You can hallways or whatever you want to make. If you go into another view, you might actually like see more of the idea. See, and you like get some ideas when you look at these crazy, crazy views. We've just used cubes here. You know, I'm just saying you can you can add an, another plane in somewhere and make some ground or something and make it just use your imagination. You know, and come up with some different shapes. Now I've got them kind of spread apart pretty far, I must say. But you know what I mean. I can, work with, I can click on this one here, and I can bring it down. So now it's like we're working with like Lego bricks or something. I'm just literally, you know, moving things around and placing them as I wish. Because now what we've got is a lot of random shapes, which is cool. I've got like, they're not all cube cubes as such. They're like different things. So I could like, I could duplicate this one maybe here. Bang. Move it on the axis again. X. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Ah, what the hell just happened? So hold that. Boom, duplicate that on the x-axis, move it along, bam, click both of them, just move them up, select this, look at this one I'm doing here, if you will, uh, boom, boom, right, I'm going to hold control and press J just for quickness, okay, bam, that's one object now, from here I can basically scale this object into one long corridor, basically by going to scale and dragging it along here, see, Okay, and then from here I can just move this thing along. So, so it's a way of, we've not even used much in terms of editing, we've not gone into editing mode or anything, but I'm actually able to do some stuff, right? I can put this in through the middle somewhere here, like a corridor, like it looks like a building or something, I don't know. Some boxes in a corridor, I can move this one to the side of this in the way. <laughs> There's a doorway at the end there I can see. You're doing all kinds of like, cool stuff. You can come up with some ideas, you know. Um, you might want to do all kinds of different things. I could like literally open it up maybe even further by going to... Oh, it was upside down. I didn't even realise it. Okay, let's go... Where is it? Here. Ah, oh, where is the damn thing? I've lost it now. Oh, it wasn't upside down. Okay, here. Oh, it wasn't upside down. Let's quote the century. <laughs> drag this out okay here like a really wide one so now we've got like some floor or something going on in here see so it's like a big cluttered room we've got a load of boxes or something and I know it's like it's crazy I know it's like stuff but it's stuff you can do you know click that one object just delete it for a second but you know what I mean and you can like select all of these even you know duplicate those hold shift press D move them around we just lost the whole lot. I don't know where they went. They've gone somewhere. <laughs> so like, I'm going to join them. Fuck it. Hold control and press J. Sorry, man. Is that one object yet? No, still not. Okay, hold control. One still selected. Hold control, press J. 
I said, Jay, why is it not working? Oh, it is working. It took a while. Okay. That's one object now. So I can move this around as one object, right? Okay, one object. I can duplicate that whole control and press D to duplicate. I can move this around. You know, even rotate that or whatever I want to do, something crazy. Change the size or the shape or something about it. Something about it, you know. If you click on the center, you can still like move it around anywhere, as I say. But I can go into this into this mess in some way and just imagine that like, all these different scenes and I could draw on top of this and like make buildings and stuff, you know. I could just choose to like size things differently and stuff and like make walkways or anything I want within this, okay? Um, it could be I can make a city easily. You can make a city with this very very easily. You probably have to change the origin of the of the size, but you don't have to. I mean, I'll show you for example. If I select all of these, okay, just make a bunch of buildings, like really simple, you know. Go and make a make a a cube, a cube. Uh, we'll scale it up on the. I want to do it on this axis, okay here. Bam. Okay, just right. Move it up to there, whatever. Then we're going to like obviously duplicate that. So move in one. We'll just do a few of these. Okay, I'm not going to do loads. Let's just make um, a few of these. Can it dark? Let me turn the light on. It. What the hell I'm doing? I'm going to do this a couple more times and we'll be ready. They're all single objects. I've not joined them yet, so you know. I'm going to select all of those, bam, bam. Okay, so we're going to have a very tiny city, okay. Do this here, select all of those. Uh, go to Object, Transform, Random Transform. Uh, but go down to the objects here, and we're going to change a few things. Click all of that off. Go back to how it was, okay. Click all of those toggles off where the ticks are. And uh, I want to just change the scale on the Z-axis, basically. So go to Scale. Why is that not work? No, no, so no, not scale even. Sorry, randomized scale. So randomized scale, yeah. And then just bring them back. To, uh, I'm just trying to change the height, really, of what I'm trying to do. So you should really probably put these to like a zero or so. It depends, really. I mean, I could change the rotation. You know, I could change the rotation. Like, bring these. How do you zero, I guess? Put, put those at zero. Yeah, yeah, okay. Put this at zero as well, I think. Put these all at zero. Put everything at zero first. I'm just getting everything back to zero. Uh, what I'm trying to say. Well, we've got another city over there in the sky. Look, that's crazy. Delete that shit. <laughs> Delete that shit, man. Right there. Um, yeah, but I don't know what the hell just happened there. Go to transform, randomize, transform. Sort of randomize, isn't it? So scale. I know. I was trying to make a build. I was trying to make a load of buildings anyway. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Okay, I need to bring this one up to me. I don't know. Clear the rotation as well. I think. Just moving the buildings like it's an earthquake, like it matters. Oh fuck. Okay, let's just do that, okay. <laughs> let's just have that. Uh, you, you get the idea, I'm just saying you could like move a load of things into shape and make a load of buildings is what I'm trying to basically say. Um, I guess one thing we could do is just transform. I don't even know how we got to this mess. <laughs> let's select this again. Go to object, transform. See, it's, it's going to... See, it's gonna it's gonna play with the randomize. Oh, okay, no, it isn't. Hang on. Location. Okay, hold on. Uh, scale. I need to choose a uh, even scale, right? Even scale, and then yeah, okay, even scale. That's the one. That should be the one. Even scale. Scale even. Make sure to select it and go to random randomize scale, so they'll be different. You know what I mean? Okay. Then, basically, just uh, yeah, it's something to do with the um, 
is something to do with the way that's working. So let's just say the buildings can uh, location wise we can uh, I guess that's one way you could do it. It's not the best way. I'm going to click there. I'm going to make a plane. Go to trans. Uh, go to add mesh plane. Press S for scale. Then press 100 to make a massive plane. You can see how big that is. Uh, I should have selected these buildings. No, hang on. No, no. I'm going to move the buildings so that they're I'm going to get rid of some of those small ones just quickly. They're just small. They're just small companies, you know. They ain't worth a shit, you know. So I'm saying you could probably like just move these. That's doing it. I mean, the best way of doing what what I'm doing here is like having the origins set a certain way to the bottom and stuff. That's another way. But I've not done that. But yeah, you know what I mean though. You could like do things. You could lay out like some kind of map or some kind of floor plan, know where the roads are and stuff, or make some roads or something, you know. And you could like think. You can see that that city in the sky is still there. Maybe it's an alien ship or something. I don't know. Get rid of that. Man. This is a floating building of the future. Right, AI bosses. So you can get there, okay. You know, and, um, you get the idea now, right? You can literally go into your rendered mode or whatever you want to have. You know, if you want a bit of 3D stuff. Just really quickly add. Um, add light, for example, point light. Where's that point light? You know, just have some fun there. Bring a light in. Bring it up there. I don't know. Go over to the the color of the light. Where's the, go down to the light settings on the bottom right here. There's a light bulb. You know, power that up. So you lift, max the power right up. Yeah, change. Click the numbers if you want to do it that way. Bam, see, we got some uh, some stuff going on, oh, yeah, press the colour, change the colour if you want to do the colour here, yes, radius, things like that, you can play around with the radius or what, move the light the same way you would any object, you hold on, hold on one second guys, hold on one second, hold on. So, as I say, um, I'm going to finish this video now. I'm going to finish this video, okay? I want to say thank you very much for watching. I've got to go and have something to eat, basically, is what it is. Okay, I'm, I'm very sorry, very sorry. This is clip uh, three here, clip three, okay? Uh, I've had to like edit this a little bit here. Um, I'm gonna put these together, but you can see what we got, like some different uh, features and stuff you can have there. Uh, if I click uh, to another object just really quickly, um, you know, I can obviously turn off my visuals here if they're in the way, you know? Um, but things like that you can have, you know, you can, um, obviously go to different um, views like in the world and things and, and change certain things obviously to make things look different you can put shiny effects and stuff on your materials I'm not really going to go through that right now but you know what I mean I could make one of the buildings a different colour or something as I've already said before like I could go and add like a material by clicking on new here and it's changing the base colour to like red or something here uh, I can also uh, click on that, make sure I select it. I can go down and change things like if I want to change the roughness, I can bring the roughness right down so it's really shiny. And I can bring the, uh, we can't really see it very well here, but the reason that is is because if we follow my mouse here, I'm going to click on this thing here now, which is the render settings, and we're going to click on bloom, and I'm going to click on. Um, screen space reflections and that will load up and um, you can see now that this particular building is shiny I'll cover this stuff more in another video uh, I've got some reflections going 
I can move this light as I say into place and it'll be like really really bright if you've got that bloom set up I tell you I tell you, you know, the bloom and um, you know you can really put the power you can really max up that power as I say or, it, or you can go into the settings there and go to where it says bloom and uh, bring that right up intensity wise the intensity see and that will really bring that what it should do go to fresh threshold try a few things out and you'll see what they do you know if you want to do effects and stuff uh, I can change the colour of that too knee I don't know what that does hold on that's basically what we got though for now you know but um, yeah you can like bring that bit closer there like the closer you get you'll see certain things you can, you can have it really really bright as well you can like really brighten it up we're just doing a basic I'm just showing you some basics here okay, as I say but I'm not the goal really is not to be having 3d we're just talking about this basic mode I'm talking about really so for getting some random shapes for like the buildings and stuff you know that's what I'm really talking about uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a new project here general discard changes uh, select those to the camera and the light press delete uh, delete the cube as well and I'm gonna go to add for one more feature I'm gonna go to add okay um, and I'm gonna go to mesh Okay, go to add and go to mesh and then go down to extras if you have extras you may need to um, import them you may need to set them on basically that's the best way I can put it go down to this one that here under that so go to add mesh all the way down to extras if you have them set and then go to Menger sponge if I'm pronouncing that right Menger sponge when you click on that it will give you this strange cube thing here with like holes in it and stuff it's pretty cool because you've got all these holes and you can go here you can click on that um, let's do the just do it again I have to get that option back up on uh, mesh boom, boom, boom. extras menja sponge then with the features you can like give it more stuff like go to the level and level up by pressing that there on the level and it'll give you more holes and stuff you can work with this in a certain way if you level that up a few times there too and then go into wireframe mode look what you get <laughs> x-ray mode you can have on or off and then you get this kind of a shape so it's crazy and that could be that that could help you could serve as like a base for like setting up a scene if you wanted to draw some buildings or cities or something you could mix that with what we already had too what we were doing before another thing you can also do obviously you can size this whole thing too don't forget and another thing you can actually do as well is go to uh, click the object okay and then go to uh, I believe it's object and then transform am I right no I think I'm wrong in saying that I was gonna do something else where it like changes the shape of it um so we'll go to edit mode maybe edit mode I think is it edit mode nope it's not edit mode okay object mode right click and where is the thing I can't find it now <laughs> there's something you can do here which like bends this shape into some strange shape think transform maybe randomize transform I don't know now I can't find it now guys so I can't there's another thing you can do which like just, just makes the thing just twist up and go crazy show you in another video or something I think because I can't find it here now but uh, it may be under that if I go to um, randomize transform no, I don't think it is that I'm gonna stop this video now as I say okay I'm gonna stop this video and say thank you very much for watching a lot more stuff to come okay but this is what I'm saying this kind of thing like if you go to wireframe and then go to x-ray view for example and zoom in that like you can imagine that like you can like use this as a guide like draw you know some scenery or something based off of this I can can you see any lines or anything that's look that look interesting you can like draw a room or something you know what I mean you don't have to have this many um this have it this cluttered as I say but you can use something like this you know in a certain way you know for a guide take a screenshot make it a bit faint like looking with the opacity or whatever and then draw it on top of it and use it as a guide you know 
thanks very much for watching i'll talk to you again soon thanks for more in the next video i will cover more of the edit mode uh, features i'll do that i'll like cover these features along the side here just remember remember edit mode you need to select your objects before you edit them uh, by going into object mode making sure you've got the right one, right one selected and also in edit mode don't forget you've got these three points here like point uh edge and face okay so thank you so much for watching this and i'll see you again soon